What's good, YouTube? We back with another video, and today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I mix my beats. For this video, I'm gonna be using Strata Studio, but that does not mean that you can't apply these techniques on other softwares. So most of the stuff that I'm gonna be doing, you can also do on Ableton, FL Studio, Machines, maybe even Koala. But with that being said, let's jump straight into the video. All right, so there's two different ways that I mix my beats. I got the lazy way, and then I got the serious way. And I am gonna be showing you guys examples of both styles. So for this first beat, this is a lazy style. As you can see, we got the drums right here. Not much is done right here on the sample. Again, not much, but the lows. And then we also have a vocal channel. There was a little bit more put into this one. But the master, all we have is a graphic EQ. And I'm also using a compressor on the 404 to finish everything up. So let me show you guys exactly how I got to where I am right now. So for the drums, you guys already know, they gotta be swinging, but EQ wise, not much is done. We got the kick drum, not much is done here. We got the snare, again, not much is done. But on these two different percussion sounds that I got, a little hi-hat and a cowbell, I did take out some bass. So as you can see, took out some bass and I also added a high pass filter. For this cowbell, took out some bass, added a high pass filter, but I also panned it to the left a little bit. Now you guys understand this, panning is crucial if you want to have a really good mix. Think of your beat as a box, all right? You got this little box right here. If you got this box and all the sounds are going through the same box, it's gonna sound kind of linear, uh, mono even, and it's just not, it's not gonna sound like it's surrounding you. But when you have that box and you play some sounds on different sides, of, you know, different sides of your ears, or if you got some sounds lower than others, making it sound like, you know, if you got some strings and you lower them, it's gonna kinda sound like they're in the background. Now what that does is it makes this box and it turns it into a cube. So I can't do a cube with my hands, but you guys get the point. So once you start playing sounds in different areas, um, you know, lowering it and putting it to the side, you kinda expand the track as a whole and it basically just makes it sound a lot more stereo. But let's continue with the, the video. So for the sample, I didn't really do much. I just took out a little bit of the lows and I did that just to make it sound a little bit cleaner. It was a little bit too much um, going on with the kick drum and the lows and this pretty much topped it off. I also added some side chain and I triggered that uh, with the kick drum as you can see. And I just used that so that whenever the kick drum hits, the sample kind of ducks. Onto the vocals, I actually did a lot, but let me just show you guys how they sounded originally. Now pay attention, I got a little bit of math for you. Uh -huh. It's quite simple for me to if you can add and cool. If I drink Henny and eat a whole bag of shrooms, uh -huh. I'm a strip and I'm gonna be doing by this afternoon. So you guys might be wondering, why would I use this? So much background sounds, you got people talking, you got a little instrumental in the background, but don't worry, there's a way that you can handle all that. Let me just show you guys a preview of the vocals and then I'll show you how I got to that point. Alright, that's enough of that. So you guys notice, you, you still hear some background noise. But you don't hear the instrumentals. Now I can't show you guys how I did that because DiBiase actually put me on that trick. But if you really want to know, just look it up on Google. There's tons of tutorials, VSTs, and even techniques you can use when mixing to get a lot of that background sounds and instrumentals out. So with that being said, for the vocals, I raised them up a little bit, they were a little bit quiet, took out some highs, took out a lot of the mids. The mids were actually making the vocals sound very muddy and just not good at all. And I also added some lows just to put some more bass in the guy's voice. And that's how I got this. So with that, all that being done, from the little bit of mixing I did, to the drums and the sample, to the mixing on the EQ, which all I did was add some bass, just to make it knock a little harder. To the compression on the 404, this uh, was the end product. Shot. Just play the middle with a feel like a shortstop. Or when 
they stop short, better pop off blood everywhere. Hot sauce over dry off. You see something, say nothing. Mind your, or your mind will be stained on its sides off. technique so this next one is going to be a little bit more extensive you're going to see that I do a lot more and it's going to be a little bit more uh, complicated I guess you can say but enough talking let's get straight into it so for this one there's a few more tracks each track pretty much has something done to it and let me just give you guys a quick preview of the beat and then I'll show you guys how I got to the point where it's at right now things first let's start off with the drums this was um, a little drum drum break that um, I sampled and I really like this so I used it so as you can see this is the, the loop right here now you might notice that I got two tracks and they're both set to the drums now that's because since this is a sample, I don't have that much control over it. But one thing I can do to gain some more control is separate the tracks and have each track set to bass, mids, and highs. But for this case, I only did two. So one for bass and then one for the mids and the highs. So first for the bass, you know, should be obvious. I took out the highs, took out the mids, added some lows to make it hit hard. And then on this track, I also took out the highs and the mids just to make sure they were all out. First I dropped in a uh, graphic EQ and I kind of added some lows right here just to emphasize the kick drum. Um, this pretty much doesn't matter because uh, all the highs and the mids are taken out and it's actually, this graphic EQ is actually the same one on the second channel for the drums as you can see right here. So the, you know, the highs don't really matter on this first track. It just so happened that when I duplicated this track, that graphic EQ was already on it. And um, yeah. So next up, we got Ozone 9. Ozone 9 is one of my favorite VSTs to use. I got it for free, uh, thanks to Serato Studio actually. And ever since I've you know gotten it, it's just been so useful. It has so many features from the basic equalizer to you can widen your uh, sounds make it more stereo and you can also make a mono and you can also swap the um I don't know what the, the proper word is but you can make the things that play on the right play on the left and then vice versa things that play on the left on the right so basically you can just 
swap the two uh, sides together, which is pretty dope. So for this beat, for the bass, uh, I selected mono because I wanted the bass to be centered. I typically don't like for my bass to be playing uh, unevenly throughout both sides. So usually I just um, play the bass mono. So that's pretty much all I did for the bass was take out all the highs as you can see. No highs, we don't want no highs because I just want the kick drums to be playing. And then you see a, a big dip right here because the frequencies right here just weren't pleasant at all. Um, I could show you guys an example of how I sounded. So uh, let me show you. This is with Ozone on. This is with it off. As you can hear, when it's on, last but not least, we got this last graphic EQ, and I just added some more bass, and I took out um, this frequency right here, because it kind of wasn't, it didn't really sound that good. And that's how I got the bass section for the drums. On to the mids and highs for the drums. You guys already know, we got this graphic EQ. Um, I just pretty much raised everything except for this one. This frequency was a little bit too high. Let's see if, if you can hear a difference when I turn it all the way up. So, as you guys can see, I also use Ozone 9, but this graphic EQ looks a little bit different. So, as you can see, we have no bass right here, and we also took out the very high frequencies and that gave us this sound not much is done right here besides the bass being taken out and you guys also see that I widened the sound so this just made it sound like the drums were a little bit more panned out instead of being mono uh, being linear Now, if I wanted them to sound wider, I could have just pressed stereo right here and just increased it. And basically all this does, as you guys can see, it has 10 milliseconds or 10.5 milliseconds. The way to get that stereo feel is it plays one sound on one side of the ear and it plays it again on the other side, but it's happening really quickly. Um, milliseconds, as you can see. So if you uh, increase that time that it takes for the sound to play on the other ear is going to make the sound sound a lot more stereo. So let me show you guys real quick. So as you see, it started getting a little bit wider, a little bit wider, a little bit wider, and yeah. That wasn't really necessary for these drums, but if you have things like vocals or strings, that could be pretty useful. Up next, we got the keys. My favorite part of the beat, and all I did was use these Neo Soul Keys Studio 2 by Gospel Musicians. Not much to say besides it's a it's a wonderful VST. Um, highly recommend it if you if you play keys. Uh, not much. I didn't really have to change much actually for the, for EQ wise. All I did was add a low pass filter, and. I had isotope vinyl just to make the sound sound a lot more uh, vintage, like it was being played on the vinyl. And all I did was play it at 1960. So this is how it sounds. Um, or let me, let me show you guys how it sounds when it's turned off compared to when it's turned on. Now, the last thing that, that I did for the keys was also raise some of the uh, the lows just to make them sound a little bit more warm. You know, Isotope did a great job at making it sound uh, old and, and kind of grimy, but it kind of took out too much bass, so I just added that uh, graphic EQ to, to fill it in. I also added some slide chain, as you guys can see, um, which you guys know what that does. 
It makes the kick, kick. Up next, we got the base. Um, not much to say here. It's a bass line. Um, I cranked up the lows all the way, but you can ignore that. It's, it doesn't really do much, but make the bass a little bit louder. I ended up turning it down, so I actually didn't really need to raise the lows at all. But yeah, not much to say for bass. Last but not least, we got these other keys that I used. And um, you don't really hear them until the end of the uh, um, loop. So this is how they sound. Oops. Now you guys might be wondering, why did I play the keys on this channel when I could have just played them on the original keys? The reason is because, you see I put this one pass filter that just makes the keys sound a lot more muddy, and I wanted that uh, that little section to sound really clean and stand out a lot, so I just put it by itself with no filter on it. Now towards the master, as you can see, I added a master compressor, which is, you know, a built-in compressor that comes with Serato Studio, and I actually didn't use the compressor on the 404. The reason is because the 404's compressor is great, but sometimes it's a little bit too powerful and it, it just kind of it puts everything in your face and it can kind of mess up the mix. So I used the Serato Studio compressor, cranked it up almost halfway, and I was pretty much satisfied with that. So with all that being done, I'll play the full beat, beat for you guys and yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Alright man, so that's pretty much the video right there. It actually turned out a little bit longer than I expected, but I just wanted to make sure you guys had a pretty good understanding of how I mix and master my beats. I know that I'm not the best, I know that there's guys out there that's doing, you know, some crazy stuff and making their mixes sound way better, but I have a certain way that I do things, and hopefully if you want your stuff to sound similar to the way that I do, this kind of shows you guys and gives you guys an, an idea of what I do. If you guys have any more questions, uh, try to hit me up in the comments. I'll try to get back to, to you guys. And hit me up with some more video suggestions. I do plan on doing a lot more of the making it be like other producers. Um, I've seen some pretty good recommendations and I might take you guys up on those uh, offers. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys learned something new. And um, I'll see you guys next time. Peace.